A great many people with whom the average policeman must cope are mentally disturbed. A few of these become violent. It's fortunate when the police can call on skilled psychiatric attendants for help. However, most of the time the police must deal with the mentally disturbed on their own. The vast majority of mentally disturbed people are not violent. They're borderline cases who will continue to live outside institutions. Many are old people whose bodily ills are affecting their minds. Somebody's got to do something. That's the third time this week. Well, I've already put in some nice cure in it. We'll take care of this lady. What's the trouble, Ben? I want those bananas to fry for my children to bring them home, and, and I can't do it. Well, listen, uh, we, we'll take care of that. Uh, don't you want to show us some pictures of your children? Wait, I have it in my voice. Well, come on. We'll, we'll wait, wait, wait. Oh. Uh, Ain't it funny to see my They can be handled best at times like this by the policeman who has made their acquaintance on his daily rounds. <laughs> the mentally retarded are seldom violent. The police problem here is to keep the boy from being teased or misled into serious crime. The officer who is aware of the neighborhood situation and knows the boy's family is in a better position to head off real trouble. He's 13 and 9. I think he should have friends, such as the boy out there. I just don't know what to do. He's getting out of hand now. I just don't know. <laughs> The would-be suicide is also suffering from some type of emotional disturbance. Once rescued, such persons are almost never difficult to handle, but they tend to be repeaters. Unless safeguards are taken, the police may well have to rescue this man all over again tonight. The public seldom appreciates how risky and time-consuming these rescues can be. One pack of wet cigarettes. No sooner they give you a receipt with, uh, for your money, we'll uh, let you use the phone. You don't want to use the phone? I'll let you folks know that you're in here then. Where laws permit, a person who has attempted suicide should be held until medical help can be found. Belts, shoelaces, or clothes he might use in a new attempt to kill himself are, of course, removed. It's important that he be put in a cell by himself. Want a cigarette? Let me give you a light. He should be allowed to smoke, but given no matches. Few precinct stations have special isolation cells. In this one, the toilet bowl, wash basin, and bunk are all possible sources of danger if the prisoner should make another attempt on his life. So the turnkey is careful to put him where he can be watched more or less constantly. The boy is perfectly all right. Joe, Miss Chandler brought some clothes for her boy in the back. Oh, he can't have this tie. He must take it back home. That's why I say the best thing to do is leave the boy in here. Don't bail him out. Let him stay here until we can have a doctor look at him. Yes, I know, Lieutenant. It's not the first time. That's what I mean. We've handled him twice in this precinct already. In here, he can't hurt anybody, and he can't hurt himself. We'll let a doctor look at him in the morning. In the meantime, if you all can get an ambulance from one of the psychiatric hospitals and take him to the hospital, we'll be glad to release him to you. But he'll be better off here until you can do that. Thank you, Lieutenant. That's all right, sir. Once again, taking time to talk with the family is good police work. Time is 8.14, given out. Item 101. Card 10. Go 
Squad 10. Car 10, investigate a disturbance at 5002 Diamond Street. Most reports of trouble come to the police without any suggestion that a mental patient might be involved. They must be prepared for anything. Officer, there's a man next to me in my, next to my apartment who is cussing and swearing something awful. Don't worry, we'll take care of it, ma'am. What's the trouble up there? I don't know, officer. The people have been raising hell up there all night. Who's up there? The only one that I know is Paul Horace and his wife. Any fire escapes or stairways from the apartment? The only one you see is right up there in front of you. All right, maybe you can move all these people out of the stairway in case we have to come out fast. All right, officer. All right, folks. Let's move down. Mr. Harris, open the door. No Police. One moment, please. Here she comes. He's got a knife, a knife, got a knife. I'm just take it easy. I'm over the spot ahead and put it here. Calm down. Are you all right? Yes, officer, I'm all right. He hit me, but I'm all right. Is anybody else in there with him? Well, officer, he's alone. Does he have a gun? No, officer. All right. Has he been drinking? Not that much. Has he ever acted like this before? He's had spells, but he's never hit me before. He's had nervous spells? Yes, sir. What are you doing? God damn it! You slipped down on me. You went and called those policemen. I, I can hear what you're saying. I know what you're telling them. I'm crazy. I've done a lot of things. Can we go in? Plenty of time. Get on the radio. Tell headquarters to send another car. Please. But he's alone. Alone, but maybe with a knife. Get down there. Now the sergeant can set his plan of action. His first step: get more help. <laughs> Waiting is also part of the sergeant's plan. If apprehension can be delayed for a while, disturbed people often become easier to manage. Uh, no, I didn't, officer, really. I, I didn't want to cause a fuss. That's the reason I didn't call. Lucy! Can you hear me, Lucy? You sneaked behind my back. You went downstairs and called those police. You was on my side. And you see, now he's been acting strange lately. He, uh, he thinks the neighbors are out to kill him. And damn neighbors, they all, all they do is make trouble. And, uh, really, I have been ashamed. Officer, don't listen to what she's telling you. She's gonna Did he see Paul Hart, who worked at the Midway Garage on Jackson Avenue? Uh, yes, he's the same. But uh, he didn't wake nowhere much lately. Uh, said he's not feeling good. And when I asked him to go to the doctor, he just got mad. You hear me, Lucy? I can hear what you're saying. You better tell him the truth. Oh, God, if I ever get at you, I'll take you and those neighbors. All right, fellas. I'm going to try to talk him out of the room first. But in the event that I fail, Happy horse, you follow me into the room. You take the left side. I'll go to the right. Yes. Sims, I want you stationed at this door in the event that we have trouble with it. Salva, you watch that entrance door to the hallway. We're going to try to talk him first. Even when reinforcements are here, delay is still part of the sergeant's plan. Perhaps he can win Mr. Harris's confidence and avoid any physical struggle. Let me come in and talk to you, Paul. No. Go through the door. We heard you had trouble with the neighbors. I want to come in and help you. Those son of a bitch will tell you anything. Go help them. They'll kill me. Did they tell you they want to kill me? 
There are four of us here now, Paul. We won't let them hurt you. Four of us, Paul. They're right the the Let me in and talk to you, Paul. No, talk through the door. I can talk better if we come in. I can hear right through the door. Let me come in and talk to you, Paul. No, I don't need any talking to. Let me help you. That's talk what I to the son of a bitch that called you. I want to come in and help you, Paul. I want to see if you're all right. Go ask them. They know more about me than I do myself. <laughs> Is there a ceiling light in the room, ma'am? There's the switch. Right past the TV towards the other door. We're coming in, Paul, to talk to you. What are you doing in the door? Come on out, ma'am. Let's talk. Come on, we want to help you. We're not trying to hurt you. Come on in out, out of the dark so we can talk. Let's be friends. Oh, there you are. Get out of my eyes! Get away! Go away! Get out of my eyes! Come on now, let's come out and talk. No. Let's be friends. We want to help you. No, I'm, I'm afraid to come out. We want, we're not going to let your neighbors bother you. Those son of a bitches, I'll cut them up. They cut me up, I'll cut them up before. Don't worry about them, Paul. We're here to protect you. I'm going to put the light on you, yeah? No, uh-uh. I'm yeah, not. I'm going to put the light on so we can be in the light. No, leave the light off. I'm going to put it on, Paul. No, I don't want to come out. Leave the light off. We'll put it on so we can talk a little bit better. You, you can talk with afraid. the light off. You're not going to get me. You're not going to take me. No? You're not going to get me. I like coming out and talk now, Paul. We want to be friends. No. You're not going to take me. No. Not gonna get me. Come on out. Let's be friends now. We're trying to help you. We got no. plenty of police protection here for you. Mr. Harris knows other people are listening. In part, his words of defiance are spoken for their ears. And noisy crowds can disrupt the most careful approach, even when the police are working behind closed doors. Haven't they got that man out of here yet? Keep quiet and get back. We're not gonna let you the know. sergeant continues to take his time, knowing his armed cover men are in position to move quickly if necessary. Oh, you've been having trouble with your neighbors. That's why we're here to protect you. Come on. Take it easy. Take it easy. We're your friends, Paul. Why don't you put the knife down? I need this knife. We're here to protect you, Paul. There are four of us here to help you. Nobody's going to touch you. Nobody will hurt you. This put is it my protection. This knife. The neighbors are not going to hurt you. No. Why don't you put the knife down on the table so we can be friends? No, no, I, I want this knife. So well, we can't be friends if you're going to hold a knife at me. Put it down. You put it do. down. I'm going to protect you. Nobody will get near you to hurt you. Nobody's going to hurt you. We'll take care of you. You don't have to worry about anybody. How about those neighbors? We'll take care of the neighbors. We're your friends. I'm here to protect you, Paul. And we have three other men to help. They're going to protect you. They're going to protect you. Drop the knife, Paul. You won't need it. We're going to be friends. We're here to help you. Drop the knife before you hurt yourself, Paul. You won't need it. No, no, no! Hey, Ray, what did you hear about Mentally disturbed people feel pain quite as much as the rest of us. Part of Mr. Harris's resistance is due to muscle spasm. Frightened and bewildered as he obviously is, the more he is hurt, the more he will struggle. Blows and pain-causing holds could make him go wild. Right, you feeling better now? Come on. Come on, let us help you. Let us help you. We don't want to fight you. Hey, sir, he's crazy. He's been down the fire all night. He's up. Sorry, get out of here, get the damn people out of here. Come on, remember people, big boy. I'm gonna put the cuffs on you, hear, Paul? I'm gonna put the cuffs on you now, so you don't hurt yourself. 
It's a shock to most people when handcuffs are used. Whenever possible, they should be avoided. Right now, Sergeant Cotrera's hands, his voice, and his unhurried pace are helping Paul's sick mind to accept these restraints with the least possible damage. Let it come back. I don't want to hurt you. Come on back with it, Paul. Loosen up. Loosen up. Loosen up. All right, loosen. Easy, Paul. Loosen your arm. Let your arm loose. Come on, let it loose. Let it loose. Don't fight, Paul. We're not trying to hurt you. Put the cuffs. Easy with it now. Don't hurt it. Come on. Ease up, Paul. Take it easy now. Easy now, boy. Easy, Paul. Easy. Come on, don't fight, Paul. You're gonna hurt yourself. We're gonna get you off the floor, you hear, Paul? Take it easy. Come on now, we don't want to hurt you. We're gonna roll you over. Come on, let's go over with it. All right. What a disturbed person experiences during these first crisis hours can have an important influence on his chances of ever making a permanent recovery. You okay, boy? Huh? We're friends now. You gonna get me up? Yeah, we're gonna stand you up. We're gonna let you stand up right now as soon as you feel okay. We'll take it easy now, you hear? All right, you ready? You. We heard you were in trouble. I got the police here now. Let them try something, those damn neighbors. I don't want no neighbors around here. They're not going to try anything while we're here. We're with you. Where's your partner? I'm right here. I'm right here. You're going to go with us? I'm going with you. Um, I'm sorry, officer, I've caused you so much trouble. But I really don't know what caught into him lately. Don't worry about it, lady. He'll be all right until the doctor can look at him. Now, Paul, what we're going to do is take you away from here where you'll be yeah. safe from the neighbors. Now, don't be afraid of it. You're not going to have the neighbors around when I go down there. The neighbors are not going to be around. The wagon's uh, here. Mr. Oh. Wagon's there. Mr. Wagon's there. Mr. Wagon's there. We're all gone, Paul. We're all gone. All four of us besides you. Well, make sure those neighbors are not around. They won't be around. We'll take care of you. Come on, all let's right. go. Sure, those neighbors. Ready? Let's go then. Those damn neighbors. Come on, friends, there. Come back to your room. Everybody get down. Nobody's going to hurt you. Don't hurry. Take care of you. Oh, you just go with us. No, come on. Move. Those people get out there. Get those people off the ah, yeah. Get them. Come on. Don't worry, Bob. Don't worry, Paul. We're going to take care of you. We won't let anybody hurt you. Nobody's going to hurt you. Nobody's going to hurt you. All right. Take it easy now. Feel all right? Ready to go? Get those people. We get the people out. Don't worry about the people. All right. Let's go now. Take it easy, boy. Stay calm. He'll be all right. Away. Thank Take you. it easy. We're going to keep well, him let him away. Let him come back. Nobody's going to come near you. Well, how about outside? All right, we're going to take care of you. Don't you worry about them. Let us worry about the people. All we're worried about is you. I don't want those damn people around here anyway. No, Ideally, Mr. Harris would be taken directly to a hospital with facilities to handle mental cases. Unfortunately, in most places, this is not yet possible. The police have no place to hold disturbed people but in jail, sometimes overnight, sometimes for much longer. Well, what you doing? Take it easy, Paul. You're going to get a receipt I for it. I got that wall. You're going to get everything back, Paul. Get his belt. No belt? I got pictures in that wall. You're going to get everything back. I don't want anybody to look at those pictures. It's my wife's pictures. Nobody. Disturbed people tend to be overly suspicious and may need extra reassurance about the safety of their personal belongings. Paul, these camp cuffs are uncomfortable, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I'll bet they are. I can't take them off, but I think I can help you. In fact, I know I can. Give me the big belt. All right. Handcuffs and other restraints should be removed as soon as possible. Making the disturbed person feel more comfortable is the first step in winning his confidence. Putting this on, folks.
Well, it's for your own benefit to see that you don't hurt yourself. We'll be taken off as quick as we can. If he's been upset and jerked at the cuffs during his trip to the station, he may have pinched or cut himself seriously. When it seems necessary to use handcuffs for a longer time, the wrist should be checked every half hour. Handcuffed in front, he can sit more comfortably and can smoke. When the cuffs are looped through a restraining belt, they cannot be used as a weapon. Take right that away, Palmer. To a mentally ill person, the ordinary sights and sounds of a jail can be doubly disturbing. Whenever possible, he should be put in a cell well away from other inmates. Now, Paul, I'll put you in here so that you can get some quiet and some rest. And if you rest and take care of yourself, when the doctor comes, I'll ask him if he can take those pills off. And if he tells me I can, I will. This, above all, should be remembered. What this man hears, what he sees, what he feels during these first crisis hours have an important influence on his chances of ever making a permanent recovery. Now don't forget, if you want another one, just call. We'll be right over there in the office. So just holler if you want anything, okay? Okay. Okay, come on, take it easy. Come on. The arresting officer's report provides important facts for the medical diagnosis. Is this man really a mental case? When the doctor finally sees him, he may appear quite rational. The exact words Mr. Harst used to express his fears of the neighbors and what he did may be important psychiatric clues. Once in his cell, the man's condition should be checked often. It is not unusual for mentally disturbed people to have moods that swing from one extreme to the other. Precautions should be taken against attempts at suicide, even when there have been no indications that the person had this on his mind. Let's see your wrist, Paul. Mm -hmm. I suppose you just sit down there and rest a while, Paul. As soon as the doctor comes, I'll see that he comes in and sees you. Yeah? Okay. Most experienced policemen and doctors agree. Jail is no place to hold a mentally ill person if there is any reasonable alternative. One ten, that's one up, one down, and one in the middle. You know, when Paul Harris came at me with that knife, believe me, I was plenty glad to have the help that I did have. But if he could have held off just a minute or two longer, I think that I could have talked him into dropping his weapon. I've done the same thing in other cases just like this one. In handling these people, it always helps me to remember that these people are scared, very scared. They're scared of their families, of their neighbors, and of the police too. When a policeman gets hurt handling a mentally disturbed person, it's mostly because he has tried to handle the whole deal by himself or with too little help. The thing gets out of control, you use your weapon, and then everybody's in trouble. I remember one time in a case like this, I made a great big mistake. It happened like this. We were over in the old first prison. I was new over there and didn't know many people. We had 
spent the morning in court and hadn't even had time to get a bite to eat before we went on duty. What's the matter? Oh, keep, can, can you speak English? No. Do you know what they're saying? No, sir. Quiet. Do they have any trouble around here? Fights or disturbances? No, sir. Well, what's all the hollering about? Oh, they always hollering for nothing. Where do they live? Back this way. Finish your sandwich. I'll go over and handle it. Oh. See what it's all about. Okay. Is this the place? Yes, yes, yes. I don't want to say anything. I don't want to say anything. I don't want to say anything. in this condition, the threat of a gun is meaningless. What's needed here is manpower. In some types of mental disorder, a patient can be rigid one second and overactive the next. Unless he was knocked unconscious, blows would only make him more violent. <coughs> Looks like he's given up. All right, get the piece out of the carpet. Up. communities, ambulance crews will not handle disturbed people. In the interest of public safety, the police cannot avoid this duty. Where they understand what these people are like, where they know what to expect and act accordingly, the police can do the job safely and effectively until a better solution can be found. Move out the way there. Put him over here in the hand cell. I take the strap, put one over his chest and one just above his knees. Kind of mushed you up a bit, huh? Yeah, but it was my own damn fault. How's he doing now? Well, he's nice and quiet now. How soon do you expect the doctor? Well, this is Saturday noon. 
and the hospital won't accept them without the doctor's okay, and we won't be in until Monday morning. It's a hell of a long time between now and Monday.